good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. And welcome to this uh, webinar, which is being recorded. Um, my name is Eudun Lem. I'm, I'm one of the two deputy directors in the Fisheries and Aquaculture Division of the FAO. And I'm really happy to, to see you all at this webinar today. It's an important webinar in which we focus on sustainability, but also the role of certification and sustainability and the role of communication by companies, by uh, authorities, by, by regions, to consumers, to stakeholders, to, to buyers. Um, so the focus on, on certification and communication and sustainability. We have four excellent panelists, all representing uh, different uh, areas of, of the sector. We have uh, Alicia Gallardo from, from Chile, from the Chilean government, so under secretary or vice minister of fisheries and aquaculture with a very long experience within the sector. And she'll focus on a, a scheme that is operated by Chile on, on sustainability. We have uh, Mr. Luciano uh, Pirovano, who's a director of sustainability in uh, Europe's largest uh, fish canning company, Bolton Food, uh, who will talk about their policy and their sustainability initiatives. We'll hear from uh, John Keeler in, in Florida about his company's policies on communication, how they, the, the reactions from, from his cons consumers and his, his customers have been, and how he works closely also with suppliers all over the world for, for his products. And finally, Mr. Antonio uh, Basanta Fernandez, the chief of cabinet of the um, minister for fisheries in the Junta de Galicia, the region of Galicia of Spain. So we have private, we have public sector, we have company experience. So we hope we, we will get um, interesting and, and stimulating views from our panelists and a fruitful discussion afterwards. But before we go into the discussion, we'll have a short uh, overview of the current situation from uh, my colleague Nada Bogus, who will share a few slides uh, with us in order to set the scene. Nada, please. Yes, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, uh, good, um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Audun. Uh, I'll share my screen now. Yeah, one, two. And uh, Please tell me that you see the main, yes, it should work. You see it uh, enlarged, the, the first, yes. yes. Okay, so I'll, I'll keep my presentation uh, brief to uh, allow time to the uh, panel discussion. So I'll start off setting uh, the scene in terms of uh, the importance of fish trade um, and um, status and trends in uh, certification and uh, egg labeling. So as we all know, um, uh, 73 uh, to, no, 37 to 38 percent of fish production is traded uh, internationally. And uh, uh, the 2019 estimates of fish exports equate to 162 uh, billion, uh, which, um, which is a sign that fish is one uh, very important commodity uh, in, ter in terms of international uh, commodity trade, and that exceeds uh, other commodities like uh, beef, pork, and uh, poultry. Also, as we know, uh, fish is traded globally and it's quite a complex um, uh, chain uh, or system whereby um, a species uh, or a fish can be uh, farmed uh, or harvested in one part of the world and then sent for processing to another part and uh, marketed or consumed uh, somewhere else. Uh, so with that comes a really complex uh, um, uh, chain and system that I'll try to address on, on this uh, the second uh, slide. Um, and I just mentioned that with the this inherent complex complexity that comes from uh, the the trade side, uh, addressing sustainability needs to be looked at uh, really from a system point of view, um, and also uh, a chain associated to that. 
So, which uh, brings me to talk about sustainable food systems um, uh, perspectives in terms of delivering uh, food security, nutrition uh, for all uh, in such a way that economic, social and environmental uh, basis to generate food security uh, are not uh, compromised, which is really uh, the core um, business or mandate of, uh, of FAO. So, in, in the same sense um, that it is uh, for a specific value chain, referred to in a second um, uh, image as a core value chain and um, uh, improvement of performance of farms uh, or fisheries or any other agri food enterprises are determined by a complex environment with various levels and types and natures of uh, linkages. As such, it goes without saying that the processes towards improved sustainability um, are not always uh, as straightforward or a straight line uh, for every value chain actor along the supply or value chain. The three uh, dimensions of sustainability that we'll be discussing today, um, the first is being profitable uh, throughout, that is economic sustainability, having broad-based benefits for society, social, and having a, a positive or neutral impact on the uh, natural environment and um, environmental sustainability um, are essential. And I would like to highlight that evolving market standards and their measurements often have economic, uh, social, and environmental dimensions that are linked to them. Um, and as improving social and environmental sustainability is increasingly becoming um, a strategic objective for uh, firms, uh, companies, um, in particular um, uh, fisheries and aquaculture, um, are uh, also these dimensions uh, determine market access uh, through standards, private or else, um, compliance uh, and increase uh, competitiveness uh, from uh, a market differentiation uh, side. Which brings us to the next uh, slide, we'll, we'll be looking more closely at the status and trends in certification and um, eco-labeling. So, as we all know, eco-labels and aquaculture certification schemes uh, have come into play as market-based incentives for better management of fisheries and aquaculture through uh, consumer demand for seafood products from well managed stocks or from sustainable aquaculture. From the supply chain, uh, from the supply side, uh, these schemes are set to encourage businesses to pursue sustainable procurement practices that's enhan enhancing their reputation. These features are uh, particularly appealing to retailers that put emphasis on and communicate on sustainability to their consumers and for whom securing supplies in the long term and maintaining and protecting their brand is paramount. These commitments expand to the various value chain actors and can act as risk reduction tools for stakeholders and investors, thus giving assurances for business longevity. From the demand side, eco-labels and certification uh, schemes or uh, labels are intended to make provisions for informed purchasing decisions and thus promote and uh, stimulate the sustainable use of fishery resources and aquaculture, improve consumers' confidence in aquaculture production practices and uh, products. To portray these uh, trends, the most comprehensive sources of information that I could fi find are uh, the, um, as shown on this slide, the State of uh, Sustainability Initiatives Review 2016, and uh, in the next uh, slides is the Certification and Rating Collaboration uh, digital tool um, that was updated in uh, this year, just a, a week or so before. So according to the for, first source that is at Fosinol in a State of Sustainability Initiatives review, uh, by 2015, certified production uh, had reached 23 million metric tons, accounting for 14% of global seafood production, uh, and that is up um, from 0.5 million metric, metric tons, 0.5% um, globally in 2003. 
looking closely at uh, differences between catch and uh, aquaculture, certified wild uh, catch, according to the same source, uh, always experienced the greatest growth uh, between 2009 and 2011, uh, due in part to Peruvian antrobeta that was certified in 2010, 2011. Um, and uh, although certified wild catch has grown the most in absolute terms, uh, over the past decade, aquaculture has consistently grown um, as a faster, at a faster uh, rate per annum. Between 2014 and 2015, we can see it also on a graph, uh, certified aquaculture grew uh, almost 50% uh, faster than uh, wild uh, catch. Uh, from the same uh, source always, uh, before I move on to um, uh, the other source, uh, total certified wild catch production has been growing at an annual rate of 36% uh, percent between 2003 and 2015, uh, significantly uh, outpacing the, the stagnation in, um, in catch or harvesting over the same uh, period. And following a similar path, uh, certified aquaculture production has grown exponentially at an average rate of 67, 76, sorry, uh, percent uh, per year uh, from 2003 to 2015, uh, outpacing again this time uh, the growth of um, uh, conventional aquaculture that is uh, non certified. Okay, I will not uh, delve into the, the different uh, schemes. Uh, the objective is to have, uh, to appreciate or, or to see the status and uh, the trends. Uh, now, um, from the certification and rating collaboration, it was uh, updated um, a while back. I think it was just only last year. Um, they uh, also included in their uh, assessments um, rating uh, systems that was not uh, included in the previous source. But the trend is there uh, to see that uh, certified or rated um, have gained momentum and uh, they're uh, increasing. Also, we can see the percentages there uh, for both aquaculture and uh, captured fisheries and uh, more uh, for uh, the aquaculture. Side. Okay, and uh, we all know also about the proliferation of standards as it, as it is a uh, market differentiation tool, um, which has led to plain confusion, confusion uh, among producers, but also retailers and um, consumers that uh, struggle to recognize a credible certification scheme. Uh, this perceived confusion um, has made decision making more difficult, of course, and uh, seafood more costly. To address uh, such uh, concerns, uh, companies, NGOs, and other organizations have uh, joined uh, efforts to create initiatives or frameworks um, in a manner that they have a collective non-competitive approach to provide both uh, clarity on seafood certification and ensure confidence in uh, certified uh, seafood. And um, here I would like to highlight uh, the role of FAO and what, what has been done in terms of uh, aligning um, and permitting more uh, credibility uh, for the standard setting. Uh, example is the, uh, the the guidelines that were there are three of them uh, for capture fisheries for um, inland uh, capture and uh, the latest ones uh, the technical guidelines on uh, uh, aquaculture. Uh, Sorry, not a one yes. more minute, and we have yes. to move. Yes, yes, I'm almost, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Um, Yes, so finally, I would like to conclude by saying that there is no uh, evidence uh, that sustainability certification will be phased out in, in now or in, in the future, also in view of uh, consumers increasing demand, uh, as mentioned before, for sustainable seafood. Um, I, we also know that uh, and recognize that a significant 
proportion of global seafood production is not uh, ready to engage uh, with the, the available sustainability uh, certifications or eco labels, but there are uh, alternative um, routes, um, not towards only certification, but to prove uh, a sense of working towards a better um, sustainability, let's put it um, this way. Um, in the context also of, of, of COVID, uh, this appreciation of sustainability, we know it has uh, also uh, increased. And uh, while there are indications for more localized uh, localization of uh, value chains, uh, be them domestic or, or regional, global trades inherent to seafood and aquaculture products is going to still uh, continue. So the trend is there and uh, I think it will it will remain um, as such. More credibility and uh, transparency uh, are necessary and also collaboration uh, between stakeholders and uh, organizations. And that's it from my side. Uh, thanks a lot, Alden. Sorry if I, if I went uh, over the allowed time. No, no, that's fine. Thank you very thank much, you. Nada. Thank you for mentioning the three dimensions of sustainability and also thank you for mentioning also the regional initiatives and, and the need by consumers now to, to know more. They want to know more about not only where the, the, the fish is coming from, but also how it has been produced under, under what conditions. So I think that is very, very nicely put. And it also uh, fits nicely with the next speaker or the first speaker on, on the panel. Alicia uh, Gallardo, who will uh, describe a Chilean uh, in initiative and, and how the, the Chilean uh, producers are, are using this scheme to, to sell their the, the products and to communicate to consumers. Alicia Gallardo, Gallardo please. Por favor. Thank you, Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you to the, for the FAO for the invitation. And I will try to, to explain um, about what. Well, thank you. First, for the initiative to, 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 to do this seminar, because the, I think we think the innovation uh, is clear, is, is a key point for to advance in the sustainability of fisheries and aquaculture. Uh, and one issue uh, relevant is the, to place the value on people, because the people, especially the people who work in the sea, are very involved with the um, with the experience, with the history. So uh, we need to think in more social, more heritage, more uh, culture uh, regarding to the sustainability concept. Well, the first issue that, I, that I, I, I wish to comment is, you know, Chile is an exported country. So uh, we had a, a system for certify the quality of fisheries and aquaculture products. Um, and uh, a sanitary robust system uh, during the value chain uh, and with the requirement of destination market. So I will try to share with you some additional certification schemes, specific in our domestic situation. Uh, well, for this uh, issue, I invite you to sail in our Chilean sea and learn about our experience. Some of these are in the process of consolidation and some of them are like fingerlings in development. Well, one issue to share with you is our hallmark has been supporting artisanal fisheries and small scale aquaculture. We believe that investing in them is key to achieving sustainable development particularly in the fight against poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. We celebrate the year 2022 as the International Year of Artisanal and uh, Fishing and Aquaculture. As one slogan say, I really like this slogan, small in scale, big in the value. So we are going to know, to, to try to share information with you, experience, taking in consideration the value chain of fishing and aquaculture. And I will start with the, at, the, at the end of the value chain with the market. We create uh, some uh, seal for restaurants, hotels, and supermarkets called blue seal. 
that recognize compliance with regulations through an electronic traceability system that perform our uh, fisheries authority uh, called Senapesca. In this system, uh, the fisherman can carry out procedure online without having to go to an office faster but difficult to implement in very, in very isolated areas. In, ad in addition, it's allowed better control and monitoring of fishing, at, of fishing and aquaculture. However, I need to be trust with you, the success of this label was not as we expected. The question was how to promote, because the sustainable or the legal compliance was not enough, maybe for the consumer, maybe for the people, and we trust, we try to think about uh, to promote uh, the level uh, in a greater number of restaurants, uh, how to increase the consumption of fish and shellfish in our country. You know, we have a lot of sea, but low consumption. So the answer was in the value of the value chain. It's, it's maybe some confused. How interest for the consumer is to know through a video, the fisherman or fisherwoman in the fishing operation. Uh, to know his name, for example, to know uh, in which area is, are the fishing is done, and perhaps with the constellation of the star. That is the great value of artisanal fishing, a job that is create, carried out from generation to generation, which is selective gear and with respect to the marine, with a lot of respect to the marine environment. Choose, we create a pilot program for artisanal fishing called commercial traceability, with onboard cameras that show the fishing at sea, its landing, and also had support the commercialization, reducing intermediaries and increasing the price. This is how we arrive at the restaurant with a QR, QR code that show all this, value even more with the pandemic that favors QR. We also arrived at the first, which is a more massive way to reach consumers. We achieved better price for fishermen and also for consumers. And Chilean began to get to know the fishermen of the common hake, for example, from the center, the Reineta, Brahma, Australia from the south. Once again, the people and their environment as the best sell, also endorsed by the authority. What came later was the creation of something as a marketplace, now from the place of disembarkation process. Let's go again to the value chain, now with fresh products, fresh from the sea. In Chile, we call these places as uh, Caleta. Uh, this is a land, uh, landing uh, place, and this we support uh, them with call trucks, food trucks, ice room, and microprocessing modules. This is how we started a program called Smart Caleta to add value to these landing places. Caleta produces productive diversification to face and mitigate climate change and environmental sustainability by incorporating artisanal fishing in the clean production and recirculation in some pilot experience. This certification will be one of the main challenges on the work on 2022. We also realized a project related with climate change uh, carried out with, FAO, with the FAO and GEF and highlight the relevance of productive diversification. Uh, for example, we work with the woman uh, in the diversification of the activities and we create some heritage routes, routes as experiment as an experiential tourism. For example, the Cochayuyo routes is a seaweed this is the Cochayuyo in, um, in, from the sea. And then we create some uh, additional uh, add value as a snack. This is very interesting for to advance in, in the mitigate of the climate change. Let's follow to the value chain and go to the sea. We implement in the sea the certification process of the landing of both the industrial and artisanal fleets with which is possible to verify that the fishing vessel declared the volume and species caught. This means better control of fishing quotas and a decrease in the IUU fishing. We also incorporate technological tools in industrial fishing, such uh, as electronic locks on board, cameras within the framework of the disposal law. This camera allows 
us to detect and record all these card action that securing on board in order to know the percentages and uh, take measures that contribute to their decrease. We also uh, recognize that women are fundamental in, the, in this value chain uh, as an agent for achieving food security and especially for sustainability in fisheries and aqu aquaculture. For the above, Chile recently has a law that promotes gender equity in fish and aquaculture, where, for example, they will have a quota to be part of the different instances of governance of fishing and aquaculture committee, national fish, etc. To conclude, we believe that the key elements to improve the marketing chains and the sustainability of fish and aquaculture products are a good governance, taking in consideration the, the main actors, the use of technologies and a lot of innovation, public-private collaboration, certification that add value to the fisheries products, and maybe a key factor is to listen more the consumer, to listen more to consumer, local communities, civil society, and especially our people from the sea. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alicia Gallardo, for that and, and the Chilean experience. Now we move on to, to Europe, uh, Bolton Food, and Luciano uh, Pirovano, Director of Sustainability. Um, Luciano, please. Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Very happy to be here in this uh, webinar organized by FAO. Happy and honored. In uh, Bolton Food, uh, being uh, the number one in Europe and number two in the world, we have an ambition, which, which is to be the most responsible and sustainable tuna company for the world. Uh, we want to do it in a strategic way, in a transformative way, but also in a concrete way and transparent. And we want to do this, we say, for the world, because we believe it's our duty as a leader of this market to drive the change and move the whole sector toward better standards. We have uh, uh, to, to, to reach this goal, uh, I would like to mention two important aspects. First of all, we believe it's key to join forces, it's key to work with our stakeholders, with our partners, even with our competitors. That's why we are founding member of ISSF, which is the uh, currently the point of reference when, as, when it's about tuna science and tuna sustainability. And also, we, that's why we have a transformative partnership with WWF on sustainable fishing and that's the ocean and with Oxfam on social accountability. We have a mantra in our company, which says partnership is our leadership. But for sure, a second and very important aspect that is asked also by our partner that used to call themselves also critical friends is to be totally transparent and accountable. And in this perspective is clear that certification are a key tool, obviously, uh, it's uh, in, um, for us a very important certification and decolabeling is Marine Stewardship Council that, as we all know, is, is been inspired by FAO guidelines and thanks FAO to exist and also recognized by the Global Seafood Sustainability Initiative as the most serious ecolabeling for tuna. Is uh, about uh, probably the best current available standard, maybe not perfect, but striving to improve constantly. And uh, it's for us also a tool, concrete tool to improve fisheries. For ISSF, the vision of ISSF is to bring all tuna fishery to be able to be certified, MSC certified without condition. And in our agreement with WWF, we are committed to source 100% within 2024 from fisheries that are or MSC certified or under a credible and comprehensive fishery improvement project that, as we know, is using anyway the MSC standard to improve the fishery. 
because unfortunately today in tuna, only 28% roughly of the global tuna is uh, uh, certified. So we need to uh, continue to work fishery by fishery, hand in hand with our partner, with WWF to improve things. Let me remind that we need to join forces with our partner to advocate RFMOs, regional fishery management organization, to take action and to move faster. Because sometimes we are not able to reach this certification or we risk to lose this certification, as I hope it will not happen in the, in the West Pacific, due to the fact that RFMOs are not fast enough. Obviously, there are also many other certification that are key if you want to be accountable and transparent. I used to say that there is no sustainability without a fully transparent and traceable supply chain. That's why we are very proud of our traceability system, which has been developed again in partnership with IBM, is one of the most solid and reliable and technological advanced uh, su supplier portal developed in the tuna industry. And this system and the world supply chain is certified ISO 22005, which is the best standard for food traceability. Obviously, in our factories, many other certifications are key. Obviously, the 9001, since the 50001, and so on. But let me close mentioning another point that we believe is very important, which is about a social accountability, which is about having a fully inclusive and free from labor abuses supply chain. We know that in tuna and migratory fish, there is this kind of risk. So we need to be more accountable and externally verified also when it comes to social aspects. That's, by the way, I remind you that today is the, the Human Rights Day. And so for us, it's an important day because uh, we are working, as I mentioned with, before, with Oxfam, Oxfam uh, that one of probably the best NGOs fighting inequalities and helping company to have a, a inclusive supply chain. Um, we are working with Oxfam to uh, make a deep analysis of our supply chain using their own methodology, which is called human right impact assessment, which is a deep external assessment of the supply chain. And uh, I think we need uh, to pay more and more attention to this aspect. Unfortunately, is very complicated. There, there is not yet available a certification like MSC on such an aspect. I hope we will come. Anyway, we are using the know-how of our partner Oxfam to really understand our, our most strategic uh, tuna supply chains because it's we don't have to don't, 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 we don't have to forget that sustainability has three dimension, as uh, Mr. Lem mentioned before. Thank you. Thank you very much for for that. It's very encouraging to hear what what Bolton is doing. Uh, for your for the information of, of, of the participants, FAO is, is developing what we call guidance on social responsibility for companies in, in the sector. So hopefully there will be a framework for creating a standard um, sooner, sooner or later. So thank you again. And also for mentioning the important work of the RFMOs. But I also think that, that companies and the sector also have to put pressure on, on their governments within the RFMOs to, to move uh, quicker when action is, is needed. So thank you again for that. Now we're moving to uh, John Keeler in, in, in Florida, CEO of Blue Star Foods Corporation. Uh, he has a long history of, of working with the various stakeholders on a number of issues on sustainability, on social sustainability, et cetera. So uh, John, please, you can share your experience uh, in, in your global sourcing, et cetera, because you are in Florida, but you source globally. John, please. Thank you. Well, in Florida, taking advantage of the nice weather we got during winter here. Um, good morning, everyone, and honored to you guys choose me to be here uh, once again in some of your webinars. 
Um, I like to give. I'm going to give you a little in, in two parts, a little overview of our management of management of our sustainability in sourcing policy, and how we see the customers reacting uh, to the, is this, this ever question of you know what's sustainable and 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 so forth. So, um, you know, Blue Star is a public company is committed to ensure compliance uh, with relevant health, safety, and environmental legislation um, as a minimum hurdle in order to meet our obligations to our stakeholders. Uh, the board uh, is accountable for the uh, development establishment and the review of the appropriate policies in these areas. And uh, our, the best practices that we target are through the appropriate management objectives of the structure. So that's pretty much a framework that we have. Um, now, we set our environmental policies. Um, I'm gonna give you for the environmental policies and how we evolve from it, uh, then end up in our own traceability uh, program and apps and also uh, give you key lines of, uh, of social and, um, and, and governance uh, part. So when it comes to the environmental policy, um, you know, we're committed to protecting the community's living standards, uh, the environmental heritage of future generations within those communities uh, on the small scale fisheries. And as responsible corporate member of the community, uh, the company seeks to conduct profitable business uh, with a commitment to protecting that environment, and we seek to prevent the pollution and minimize the impact uh, that it, we have in the operations. Because ultimately, there's always going to be a negative impact, uh, even though our motto is, is aimed for uh, healing the planet one pound at a time. So, um, talking about the, continue talking about the environment, um, our sustainable features and eco packaging, which is also uh, an important part, is that the fishermen uh, we, we work with practice in artisanal fishing practices using safer crab, crabbing equipment and respect egg bearing female crabs. These environmental friendly fishing practices ensure that blue crab species will continue to breed and replenish the population uh, for uh, many generations to come. And um, you know, what is, what is uh, catch needs to be packed. And uh, we have developed uh, uh, a uh, eco-fresh pouch technology that allows us to reduce energy and cutting down the carbon emissions not only that makes sense for the environment, but it's also good business. And uh, com and how do we reduce the number of uh, food emission? Well, we have done an intensive life cycle analysis of our processes through this technology versus the standard of the industry. And we save up to 60% CO2 emissions versus the, uh, the standard. Um, within that, our ethical and sustainable sourcing, Blue Star aim to enhance our corporate citizenship uh, governance and ethics by aligning ourselves with the following organizations, just to name a few, MSC, uh, WWF, uh, with WTO, which I've been in Geneva a few times. And most important for us is our framework which is the Global Reporting Initiative that we'll go, I'm going to be briefing you about a little more. And that within the lines of the uh, illegal on the reporting and regular fishing uh, compliance, fishing compliance, uh, supply chain, socioeconomic surveys that we do for ourselves and the information and educational communication campaigns that we do at the source level um, in order to understand and the feedback of, of who was, are the demographics or the aggregators that exist within the small scale fisheries. So um, give you a little, uh, going deeper into the detail of um, the sustainable work um, and digging deeper and forward, the company joined um, some uh, small NGOs to do a traceability crab, uh, crab uh, case study uh, back in uh, early 2017, and uh, displaying its growing scale and the database that we achieved in this area, we decided to enhance through the necessity to trace uh, the crab uh, landings and show the uh, consumer, you know, uh, um, on their handheld how to go about and about where the, where the crab is coming from, where their food that they're eating is really coming from. So in, in the second quarter of 2018, we have what we call a trace crab, so it's first and most significant overhaul to date, um, which uh, included 12 new functionalities and new mixing interface, because at the end you need to uh, have all this mix of products aggregated in the processing plant to package and ship uh, to be more focused on the species life cycles, compliance and utilizing Google geo tracking map interface to show the customers not only where the product came, but who caught it and how it was handled. Um, by May on the same year, um, the app was already shown progress and about 20% traceable and QR coded product and 
compliance of the company was ready to test their compliance with NOAA, uh, Seafood Importer Monitoring Program, and getting outstanding feedback for their two compliance reviews. Um, we closed that year, maintaining a 20% QR percentage and up, upping their, uh, the compliance to 90%. Um, uh, further in the social side, we are conducting several and on, ongoing uh, information educational communication campaigns on, on fishing practices. Also um, continue to um, enhance our addressability program and work in the framework of the global reporting initiative reporting. We're the only crab company in the world that have a global reporting initiative report uh, in their site available for anybody. And even go to our site, you'll be able to download it yourself. And we'll continue to focus on, on social initiative and sync all that with our SDG values that we have aimed to do. So how the customers reacted to it? Well, first of all, um, customers don't trust government uh, in terms of you know what is sustainable or not. Um, they, 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 then they'll confuse with so many uh, eco labels out there and uh, they're having a hard time to, to really identify themselves to one of them. But at the end, what they, the one I wanna know is like where my product is coming from um, and try to connect with that aggregator, with that fisherman, uh, with the people that made that product possible to get there. And that is possible today with technology and handheld, we'll just simply uh, take a picture of the QR code and you'll be able to see it. But more predominantly, I see that they, in Europe, they're uh, far more ahead uh, on that demand on, on sustainability and the seek of traceability and information um, from European consumers. Uh, later on has been more than North American and um, on consumers in that side. But ultimately for us is to continue showing, uh, measure the economics and social environmental impacts um, in a profitable manner and keep the strategic objectives that we have in the small scale fisheries. And now that we have uh, a venture into a land-based aquaculture is also um, our next target that we have been working on. So that's uh, pretty much my say at this time. Thank you, Ken. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, John. Now we'll move to the fourth panelist from Galicia. Um, Antonio, please, and, and please illuminate us on, on the Galician initiative. Yeah. Hello to everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, the first uh, words uh, must be to, 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 to acknowledge to, to FAO. Uh, thanks in the name of Galicia. Thank you to FAO because uh, for putting again the focus on the of this meeting on a subject that the, we in Galicia uh, have been putting into practice for a long time is this importance of carrying of our business activities on a sustainable matter, not only in an uh, environmental way, just in uh, in the social and economic way. It's uh, necessary to be to have resources, but it's, it's so important to to have uh, uh, sailormen and uh, sailorwomen and fishermen and fisherwomen that uh, carrying out uh, uh, this activity. The Galician administration knows that Galicia is sea, and uh, when we say this, uh, we do it we do it because uh, Galicia is fishing, is self fishing, and it's aquaculture. It's the first. Uh, the first region in Europe in terms of, uh, of these activities. And we try to, to organize, to manage uh, in, a, in a correct manner, in a correct way, and uh, in a sustainable way. Our sector continues to preserve the, its traditional sense, as uh, Alicia says, uh, in its daily work. Proof uh, of this is the power of our artisanal segment, the, the, the artisanal fleet, the, the, the small scale fleet and the, the shellfish in and food is uh, the, best, uh, the best practice for, for, uh, for fix the, 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 the people on the, on the land. And it's one uh, of, the, of the part of the job of our job, the main important job of uh, our department. But it's an essence that does not lose sight of the enormous changes that the era of digital transformation has brought with, at, with it and with it, the, modern, the modernization of processes. Technological advances have, that we have implemented and with which uh, we already interact with familiarity, efficiency that in our case is, focus, is focused in traceability. 
traceability in the sense of providing our products with greater value, providing reliable and trustworthy data, and each of and every one of the transactions that are generated are generated in each link. That's why, despite not having a magic formula, we have uh, been taking steps in what uh, we believe is, is the right direction, especially in two areas, the dig digitalization of the fish markets and the certification of artisanal fishing products. The first uh, example that I can put is the primary, the primary, uh, as we said, primary, primary project, whereby that thanks to the digitalization of the fish markets, the marketing system is more agile and effective. A tool that already used in uh, 35 markets participation in the project in which more than uh, 8,035 uh, 8, sales items have been managed and nearly 2 million accounting movements have been generated. Completely traceability, a completely traceability in, uh, in so, uh, so, uh, so many points of the coast, uh, including a small scale uh, fleet ports that uh, only have uh, three or four uh, boats and a, a fishing, a fishing uh, ocean. And we need to, to, to trace uh, all the documents in this, in this way, and we are improving this, uh, this project. The second project is the brand Pescaderias on the Senon in Galician, in English, translated to English is Fisheries, where else? An initiative with which we offer consumers the guarantee of knowing that the product they are going to consume comes from artisanal fish. Fishing. We speak of uh, high quality and prestige, but also and of, of a model of sustainable exploitation of the fishing resource. An initiative of which uh, the number of registered and certificate agents has grown exponentially since the, its launch. From uh, 40, 49 accredited centers to 128, and from certificate uh, 2.4 million kilograms to uh, 11. 0.2 million kilograms uh, uh, in, the in 2019, because 2020, 2020 was a, 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 completely, a completely year lost because for these, uh, for these uh, segments of, uh, of, of uh, activity that uh, the channels of restoration and, and bars, especially in Spain with that uh, uh, important industry of uh, tourism was uh, so close that these, these people uh, suffers uh, terrible, uh, terrible downs of, uh, of his, uh, of his uh, salaries. We gain a big data of the fishing with these three these processes. We must have data on the impact of our activity and knowing as of material that provides the necessary knowledge without adding net new difficulties or obligation. That's important. The challenge is here and we will more uh, will continue to respond to it so that our sector is even more competitive, reliable and responsible. And for this, it is also necessary that the fisheries we carry out and recognize as sustainable, a key issue in the future, as, as we know. And that they are so being three dimensions, environmental, social, and economical. Recognizing, recognizing this sustainability is the objective point of any fishery certification process. And for this reason, we have already started together with the Galician Fisheries Administration and uh, the fisheries sector, a process so that these artisanal coastal fishing activity and shellfish are recognized as such. We have, an, or so we believe, a good starting point in the management model that we have been developing in, in the recent years, since the co-governance between the sector and the administration have generated an ordering of the activity that, uh, that has led us to sustainability. Working in this line, united and coordinated by the sector and administration, we will surely achieve the sustainability on the future of that certification, and we must also thank FAO for its promotion. We just want to appreciation of many people to take shape on the administration and the certification. I'm talking about issues such as those held by the University of Vigo, when it points out that the Galician barnacle extractions are the most sustainable in Europe. Or I speak of issues such as the one affirmation of the Sustainable Fisheries Partnership, 
when it points out that the Galicia is exemplary in artisanal fishing and that we can take our techniques to the whole world. We do not say it. If not people with recognize the experience and prestige and the scientific analysis of fisheries. Well, I, I am finishing. I do to reiterate the thanks to FAO for this time in the name of Galicia, for inviting us to the part of this webinar uh, and for giving us the opportunity to show the strengths of our activity in Galicia. We, without a doubt, this is a speaker that will allow us to make our voice heard loud and clear. And of course, we are in the line of all the, the speakers that uh, this uh, sustainability must to be uh, must to be translated to the to the consumers because they are the indefinitely the, the 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 most important part of our activity. If we don't don't we can sell our fish our selfish uh, with the, the the activity has a, has been a no sense. Thank you very much, Alvin. Thank you very much to all the speakers, and uh, that's all, that's all for my part. Well, thank you very much, uh, Antonio and Basanta. And, and of course, it's always interesting to, to listen to representatives from, from Galicia. And also personally, I've, I've been in, in Vigo during the conferences and congresses we have together with Consumar or, or Anfaco. So it, it's also very good to see how active the industry is in Galicia and how very good is the relationship between the private sector and the, the regional government, the, the local government in, in, in the city of Vigo, and also the, the central government. I, I think that's a very good, good, good model for, for, for en ensuring uh, sustainable practices in, in the future. Um, th so thank you, Antonio. Now, uh, I've listened carefully to, to all, all the four, four panelists, and th there are a few issues that really have been addressed by, by all of you, of, of course. We, we have been talking about certification, but there can be no certification without traceability. And I think you, you all mentioned the importance of traceability and, and also digital, uh, digital uh, traceability and, and the use of, of innovation. And I think COVID in that sense has, has accelerated on ongoing trends. Uh, so we see much, not only much more traceability than before, but we also see the needs from consumers and, and and, and consumers and, and buyers and the retailers want to know more. And in order to provide that information, there has to be uh, traceability systems in place. All speakers also mentioned the, the issue of, of social responsibility, of decent work, of, of, of decent living conditions for, for all those who are involved in, in the sector. And that is something that we didn't really speak about 10, 15 years ago. So this is a development that now is recognized as being of, of, of equal importance as the, as the environmental importance, of course. Um, and also, again, the, the importance of, 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 of providing information to, uh, to, uh, to consumers. And, and the consumers are willing to, to pay a little bit more for, for a product they trust. And in order to trust the product, they, they need information and they need to be able to to, to, to trace it or, or, or look on, on, their, on, on their cell phones and the, the, the codes and or, or read even the, you know, the labels on, on the product that it has been pr produced here and there and, and it's been, you know, and the packaging and, and all these things that we really, really didn't focus on a few years ago and the energy efficiency that, that John Keeler mentioned is, is key here. Um, and, and, and of course, the role of the small scale sector and, and the artisanal sector is, is important to all of us, even for Bolton food, you have a Poland line uh, tuna coming into your, uh, to, to your factory. So this is important for all of us. And in that respect, I'd also like to highlight again the fact that 2022 is the inter International Year on Artisanal Fisheries and Aquaculture, providing an opportunity to all of us, big or small, to all of us, whether in the private sector or in, uh, in, in the public sector, to underline the importance of the millions and millions and millions of, of additional uh, fishers and, and aquaculture operators. Um, I don't have any uh, questions from, from the audience, but, but maybe I'd, I'd like to return to, to Luciano. You mentioned something that we don't hear very often, and that is, you also want to collaborate with your competitors in, in bringing this forward. And I think that is a very important 
uh, issue because and uh, sustainability shouldn't be a competitive um, you, you know element the whole sector should be moving forward and 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 showing progress on the sector and so it's not enough that one or two companies uh, is doing something there should be sort of a broad based uh, trend or or push by the sector to 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 improve uh, sustainability standards whether it's tuna whether it's aquaculture whether it's sardines or whatever so uh, luciana if you just could reflect a little bit on that before we, we oh, close, well, I yes i totally agree with you we need to uh, as the challenges we have in front of us are so big that we need to join forces sometimes even with the competitors about sustainability for sure and a good example in the tuna industry is ISSF itself, because ISSF, which, is, which has been founded 2009, has been founded thanks to few responsible companies, competitors, that at that time felt the need to give a scientific background. Now, currently in ISSF, there are roughly from 50 to 70% of the um, uh, total processed tuna with the companies that are competitors. And uh, that is, a, I think, a very good example of responsible companies that decide to work together to support an NGOs where there are the WWF, the most uh, expert biologists, scientists, and so on. Uh, to really have an impact and have, a, I would say, the, 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 a clear director based on science to take the right decision and to have a clear strategy. So I think uh, uh, this is a good example. Uh, just to, to, to say that we are working among competitors, all our meetings are in the office of our legal firm following us since the beginning, and they are there to check that any kind of discussion has nothing to do with antitrust uh, issues. Uh, but there, there is not this, this problem because we are really focused on, on raising the bar step by step, well, in a, uh, uh, improving things. And for instance, we are working a lot on fat management, on bycatch reduction, on advocacy, together with ISSF on uh, IOTC for the Indian Ocean, WCPFC, and so on. So I think it's a good example. Very good. Thank you. Final comment from Alicia. Um, and I, I, I was very impressed by, by your initiative in Chile. Would it be an idea to, to help some neighboring countries or other countries in Latin America or elsewhere do something similar? Yeah, thank you, Odom. I, I always think uh, the network and the regional network are very uh, um, relevant for to share information. Uh, I think uh, Peru, I think uh, other countries in uh, Brazil uh, in the region uh, could be um, because you each country has different experience because the people is different because the technology is different. So a uh, good idea to organize maybe in the framework of the FIO summit, uh, some practical workshop, because um, I think we need to the same culture in Latin America. Uh, we have the same culture, we have the same uh, mind in, in our fisherman and fisherwoman, and I'm happy to, to organize or to, to try to push for this information sharing workshop. I agree with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, and, and we'll do that through the regional networks, whether it's OSPESCA or InfoPESCA or, or some of the other mechanisms, or an intergovernmental mechanism or the regional FAA office. Okay, very good. Now we've come to, uh, it's four o'clock, so I, I want to, uh, to close this. So I wish to thank all, all the panelists. I want to thank my, my colleague Nada for providing the overview, and of course also the, the audience. And, and I think the, the enthusiasm shown by, by the panelists regarding the topic, again, demonstrates the importance of, I mean, having these dialogues together, but especially the importance of, of the issues of certification, of traceability, the social dimension of, 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 uh, of uh, sustainability, the role of innovation and digitalization, and the role of the consumers. And all with, within the, the concept of, concept of fisheries and aquaculture, but particularly the, the small scale and the artisanal sectors. So with that, 
I, I thank you again for, for being willing to participate with us, either as panelists or participants. So thank you and uh, goodbye. Thank you all.